Good morning, everybody. Um, so I tried the uh, Bones coffee. I tried the chocolate orange um, first. It's tasty, but I made it too light. Like, usually I make my coffee too dark. I have a pour over and... Uh, I feel it like halfway and then I'm drinking my coffee and it kind of like sours my stomach because it's so strong um, so I've been trying to fill it only like a third or a quarter of the way and it's much better but um, this one I filled a third or a quarter and it's uh, kind of watery so I think it's a dark roast I know it's like uh, coffee's like farsighted and nearsighted it's not what it sounds like um, dark roast is, um, it imparts more flavor, I think, but you burn off the oomph of the bean, um, while cooking. So, a light roast would be a stronger blend, but, um, this one is, it tastes good. You can taste the orange, you can... A little bit taste of chocolate, but um, my coffee tastes a little watery. So um, I think tomorrow I'm going to have to do what I would normally do with coffee and do like a third or a half of the pour over sieve and see if that makes it stronger. Um, but it's really good. Um, so I just wanted to do this little clip review. And then, um, probably, I got a lot of stuff I could do today. I can weed the front corner. Or actually, I could probably weed just about anywhere. Um, but I harvested everything yesterday and put it up, so. And I still have everything. I only sold a few vegetables. So, I have all that ready. I just have to move it out to the stand, um. And, uh, I have to, out back, I'm going to take my extra plant starts and plant them, which is mostly some squash and some beans, um, some roselle pods, which are really good. They're a hibiscus flower that turns to, like, a little cranberry pod. Um, well, it's a little red pod, and you peel the, uh, leaves off, and it tastes like cranberry, uh, when you put it in tea. And what else could we do today? Uh, tie up the tomatoes. Now that I got those clips last night, um, I can stake up all my tomatoes, which is probably what I'm going to do. And see what needs pruning. Rip off any of those gross dead leaves. So, yeah. I'll film something for you. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas for any videos you want to see. Uh, and I will make more of this later. Hey everybody, it's Liz from Northern Bell Farms. Super excited. I just got a call from the post office and we have a shipment that's come in that we ordered back in March. So it's been a while and I'm very excited, but we're loading up the car. And we're all getting ready to go. <laughs> we'll show you what we got when we get there. It was baby chicks. But you already knew that, of course, didn't you? Hopefully that focused on them. Baby chicks can um, be shipped. Um, we got these from a company called uh, Pure Poultry because they're more of a specific breed we were looking for. Um, they're all bantams. Um, they're bantam cochins, um, silkies, and um, and frizzles. 
Um, part of my order was missing the, uh, what they shipped me. It was missing three black frizzles. So I emailed the company, but I'm sure they'll make it right. If not, I will definitely let you guys know about it. Um, they are going in our toy pen. Um, we're going to try and breed, um, smaller chickens, uh, the frizzles, the silkies. Uh, this is what we have so far from our first try of eggs that actually hatched. Um, this is one of our silky mamas from the toy pen. We have this grayish black silky, um, and then we have a black silky rooster, and we have a white silky, and then we put in our... Meli Fleur on coals or something like that. You souls. Um, something French, so probably not pronouncing that right at all, but um I call them uh Fleur Melis. So if I say that you know that it's that breed. Uh and I'll show you them before we go here, but um these little babies which she tries to hide if they try to hide um, look like they're a good mix of silky um, but it's hard to tell because they have some feathers that look like they're matted down like regular feathers so we'll have to see what they look like maybe they're frizzles too um, baby chicks can be shipped um, from anywhere because the first three days they don't need to go into your heat plate the first three days they don't need to eat in the egg they absorb the yolk oh honey um so that's their nutrients so they can live up to three days with no food and water now if it's really hot or really cold um usually you'll end up with some not alive in the box um and um and uh they usually will drink sooner when you get them you need to take them out of the box and you should have your brooder already set up with food and warm water you don't want to put cold water in um, you want it as warm as possible not scalding hot either but as warm as possible um, at least room temperature if not warmer so that when the baby chick drinks it doesn't lower its body temperature um, because that could shock it. If they are seeming a little lethargic and don't look that great, uh, you can hard boil an egg and pick out the yolk and crumble it up on a plate and they'll eat that uh, when they start eating, which will give them a boost of nutrients along with, we always put a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, the good one with the mother, um, into their water jug. Uh, it's supposed to make a thing called magic water. Um, it also helps uh, boost their nutrients when they arrive because um, being shipped can be really stressful on them so um, that'll help make sure you don't lose any and get them up and healthy and going and also the first three or so days after you get them you want to check for something called pasty butt um, it's where their poop will like clump up on their backside and you have to keep them washed or keep it clean if you notice it uh, otherwise it'll basically plug them up and they won't be able to go and they'll eventually pass away from it um, we also recommend the heat plates not the heat lamps um, the heat lamps are very dangerous they're actually not meant to be on for 24 hours and baby chicks need a heat lamp even if it's or a heat plate or a heat source of some kind even if it's only for the first week or two uh, once they get real feathers, they can keep themselves warm if it's warm enough out. Not if it's like 50 degrees. I would keep that heat plate in there for about a month or close to it. Um, if it's cold. But when it's hot like this, like it's 90 degrees. So I'm not too worried about it. Them, them running around in there like that. Because it's only, you know, 10 degrees off of what it's supposed to be. So if they get cold, they can just scramble under the heat plate. But um, heat lamps can cause fires if they're left on. Uh, we had one right here. Uh, the heat lamp started to singe the wood of our big brooder when we had a heat lamp and not a heat plate. Um, 
We came out in the morning and found it smoldering, and I can only imagine if it had started later on or if we hadn't noticed what would have happened. Could have been very devastating and tragic, so I recommend heat plates. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. Um, what else about baby chicks? I think that's most of my tips and tricks on the first couple weeks with your babies. Once ours get feathers, they go out into the separated pen over there where they can get used to the flock but be separate from them. Um, but these ones are going to be going in here, so I'm going to have to have my husband build something. Actually, I've been trying to get him to build me. Um, this is our toy pen, which is what I call the little chickens because they look like toys. Um, here's our rooster. His name is Cat Williams. Uh, Mr. Cat Williams. He's nice. Um, this is my daughter's pen, actually, because only she can fit in it. It's shorter than me. See? So, her going in there and feeding them and watering them works out well, since I don't fit. Um, there's supposed to be a white silky and two Fleur Malies in here, too. Oh. Let's see. Not everyone's broody, right? We're not doing that? This is why I need the, I wanted my husband to build me, okay. Like, picture a dog kennel, so the rectangular shape. We were thinking like eight feet by, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 or so, or 21. Um, and then I want three sections in it, like, so there's three different parts. Um, I was going to keep some of the toy breeds, probably five or six in one, and then five or six in another, and then the last one, um, <coughs> have it be so that it's a bunch of boxes like this outside box part here, um, against the walls and sectioned off so they're each like their own little cubby home, uh, for the broody hens so I can put... You know, we have one, two, let's see, we had four, five, six, seven, eight. We had eight broody hens, so we started with two. And when the broody hens are around the other hens, the other hens see what they're doing and start to go, well, I think I might want to do that too. So all of a sudden you have another one and another one and another one. So usually people move them so that way... Uh, the other hens don't start going broody, and when the chicks hatch, uh, the other hens don't, or and roosters don't hurt or fight with the um, babies. So I'd like to build our own little broody pen area, so that way when we have multiple broody hens, we can stick them in there, and they can be separate in a way, the way they want, and they don't bother any other hens. That would be nice. So maybe I can convince him to start that either probably next week. Probably not this week. But um, my plan was to go foraging for chanterelles in the woods this morning and go for a walk with the kids. But that's not going to happen. So, because we got a baby chick day. So I want to watch them and make sure that they're all doing okay. Because when one of them starts going downhill, they usually go downhill fast. So I just want to make sure everyone's good and okay and settling in. And then tomorrow we have to go to the feed store and get a bunch of chicken feed. Because I'm down to my last two bags. So And I like to have six or eight. Because um, we have about 60 that we're keeping hens um, for laying. And then... Uh, I have four, like, four bags of baby chick feed, which they don't go through very fast, so. But we have 12, and then three in the other pen, so it's 15, and then the other two, uh, three broody hens are sitting on two dozen and a half. So we're about to have 40 more chicks. So anybody who wants any chicks, give me a call. Let me know. We sell them for $2 a piece. Um, or we'll raise them up to laying hens and then sell them, you know, from 10 to 20 bucks a piece, depending on what they are. So 
Um, we will let you go because somebody's hungry, so we will say, don't conform, be transformed, and we'll see you later.